I was just wondering if you were going to put the Layla Gordon podcast on YouTube. It changed my life. How do you become a men's health expert? A Snickers bar, for example, has 27 grams of free sugar in it. It has so 27 grams of sugar. That's disgusting. It is. So it's a drug, it's addictive. And it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. Heart attack, diabetes, obesity, cancer. And this is like food. insanity. 850,000 people in the UK walking around with diabetes that don't even know they've got it. Everyone in the country could understand it on a real simple level. Why is there no education on this? Layla, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dodge. Yeah, very much looking forward to this. It's a different one for us, but I'm very much looking forward to this one. Mm. Let's roll all the way back. Where did you grow up and how did you become a men's health expert? Yeah, so interestingly, um, take it right back to the, the mid-70s, really. My mother moved to the Middle East. She moved to Africa to work. And that's where she met my father. And my father was an entrepreneur himself. He, he owned and ran a big farm by the banks of the River Nile, mm. believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, so they got married. My father, and he passed away. And we'll talk about that. Mm. We'll touch on that. Um, he's Sudanese, so he's from the country just below Egypt. And so, Who's, who, where, He's from Sudan? Yeah. Okay. So this is the country just below Egypt. And he didn't want the local life. Uh, he wanted something different. He was an entrepreneur. He had drive. He had spirit. And so he built this farm by the banks of the River Nile. Um, and this is where I grew up. This is where I spent the first five years of my life um, in this oasis. It was a beautiful place. People wanted to visit it all the time. Um, we had um, cattle and staff and we used to grow, obviously grow all our vegetables and everything was organic as you can imagine there was not a bit of fast food in sight it was all homegrown and amazing food and that's where like I said I spent the first five years of my life um, and I wasn't exposed to anything other than um, just fresh produce and living on a farm and um, like I said, I had animals. So I know you had a, a pet monkey. You're the only other person <laughs> I've met that also had a pet monkey. You have a pet monkey I as well. Monkey. Of course, Did I you? Lived in a Quality. Farm. I lived in a pub and I had a pet monkey. That's a bit <laughs> yeah, odd, that's isn't it? A bit odd. I actually lived on a farm, <laughs> and he was called No Problem. It yeah. was a problem. Yeah. Um, and so you know, the thing is that um, we we moved. We we came back to the country when I was five. Um, and my father really struggled with that. He sold his business. He sold what he had really put his heart and soul, his passion, his life into. And the, the sale didn't go too well. Um, and I, I really saw from a young age also what stress, business stress mm -hmm. and, you know, business life for, for a man can really be like and, and the impact that had, it had on his health. And I saw his health decline from, from a young age. Um, and, and he really didn't ever get over, um, what happened with the sale of his, of his farm and the fact that it didn't go very well. Um, and unfortunately he passed away. He passed away before the age of 65. Um, How old were you when he passed? I was 22. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really difficult time, obviously, but, you know, living on the farm, I think I just built this inner strength. So if you can imagine living on a farm by mm. the banks of the River Nile, you've got you, you had to be strong to survive. Yeah. Every day was a brush with death, I'm told, because there were scorpions, there were snakes, there was water, <laughs> there was heat, there were sandstorms. It, it was an amazing existence, but I think it gave me that real inner strength and um, that real drive. Um, and when my father passed away, actually, I... Um, my, the, the job that I had at the time, went, the, it closed, it went under. The, the company I was working for shut down a week after my father passed mm. away at the age of 22. And um, obviously that was one of the hardest times of my life. But I was offered a job at Microsoft um, the week after. And I again, that inner strength, that drive really came through. Um, and I was working for Microsoft throughout most of my 20s. So quite early, mm. you know, to be working in a job like that, traveling the world, you know, met Bill Gates, had a fantastic time during the, you know, the top the dot com boom. Um, and so that was my sort of early career. But at Behind all of this, I was always interested in health and nutrition. I was always searching for ways, you know, living in London, it was it was hard to find mm. healthy food, to be healthy, you know, mm. living a fast paced life, having a career like that. Um, it was difficult. And so I always 
it was my passion. It was my hobby on the side, really, was health and nutrition. Mm. And I think the two areas really from that was, A, living on a farm when I was young um, and really what I saw and what I was exposed to and how my like, my early years were. And then also um, seeing my father's health decline um, and just seeing from a young age the impact, mm. um, that stress and poor diet, you know, smoking, alcohol, et cetera, can really have to someone's body. Um, and one one in um, five men dies before the age of 65. And unfortunately, my father was one of those mm. men. And I think that really is where my love and my passion for health um, really shines through my clinic. Because as you say, I focus on men's health. Yeah. And when someone comes into my clinic who is a man who is struggling with their health, I can see it, I can empathise with it, um, and I can really help mm. them. Do you know when someone walks in by the look on their face if they're healthy or not? Yeah, most mm. definitely. You you can see it. You can see it in someone's skin, in their vibrancy, in their whole demeanour. Um, a lot of people can come across um, as quite um, sort of anxious. I see quite a lot of ADHD um, in my clinic, which is quite, for me, it's quite easy to spot. And there's a big link between gut health and brain health, which I'm sure we'll yeah. come on to and how we're going to talk about how sugar and, and processed food mm. really, you know, feeds in and drives yeah. that perpetual This cycle. is a really powerful subject that is being spoke about more, but there are so many people, a high percentage of the population still don't have a clue about sugar and mm. gut health and the, the processed foods that are going into their body and then wondering why everyone's getting ill at the moment mm. and it's getting worse and worse and worse as we know. Yep. Hi guys, just giving you the quick heads up. We've just launched a new VIP membership on Patreon. This gives you exclusive episodes, behind the scenes footage never seen before, VIP community chat and early access to all episodes. If you love what we do, for the sake of a cheeky pint a month, fiver a month, come and support the channel. It allows us to grow even bigger. Just to break down, what actually is gut health, would you say? Um, so we've got, you know, three levels. So we've got diet, which is what you eat. It's it's what goes into your mouth. And then we've got nutrition. Nutrition is how the food gets absorbed in your digestive system. So that's at that gut lining layer. Mm. Um, and then we've got your metabolism. That's what goes on inside the cell. Mm. You know, we're talking insulin, for example. Mm. So gut health is really everything that happens on that one cell thick lining. Mm. It's so crucial. It's so important. 70% mm. of your immune system lives in your gut. Mm. And there's a reason for that. It's because it has to assess every single thing you're putting in your mouth. Um, the immune system has to make sure, is this safe or not? And unfortunately, a lot of the time at the moment, it's not food. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a food-like substance that we're eating. And this is causing a cascade of um, chronic disease around the, the body is yeah. systemic inflammation. Yeah. Well, as we know, it's an epidemic in the UK, well, worldwide, is sugar. Yeah. So if we're talking about the amount of sugar that goes in someone's body and they don't even realise, it's actually, they're saying that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. They reckon it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. It's a drug. How mad is it? It's a full-on drug yeah. that the government are allowing people to have and it be legal. Yeah. How mad is that? Like, I, I look in, I think, Jesus Christ, I walk, in, I walk down the supermarket... I reckon 90% of the food is filled with sugar. That's correct. It is. <laughs> and the problem is sugar. So it is sugar. So if we take it back a step, in the 1960s, the sugar industry paid scientists to misinterpret the link between sugar and fat and to portray fat as the issue for heart disease. So this is why suddenly around the 1960s, 70s, they just stripped all, all, the, all the fat out, low fat this, low fat the other. And what you have to put in, you have to put sugar in its place. You have to put additives. To make it tasty. To make it tasty. Yeah. So then that has caused the epidemic of obesity, diabetes, heart disease. It, it really was this, this keystone study that was done that was funded by the sugar industry, mm. which has caused these decades worth of critical health problems that we're now faced with and it's not getting any mm. better it's only getting worse because sugar like you say is very very addictive and we can talk about different types of sugar and the fact that you know we've got glucose so glucose is an essential part of life we we cannot function without glucose that's fair so to say. for the listener give an example where is glucose found Glucose yeah. is, is found in plants. It's yeah. a cellular function of plants. So the plant will will take energy from the sun and the soil and it will, it will make glucose. Yeah. So that's what you're going to get in carbohydrates yeah. is mainly glucose. Mm. 
Um, and to a certain extent, you'll have fructose, which is another type of sugar in, in fruit. natural fruits. Yeah. But this is packaged up in, in the, the peel, in the pips, in the shells. The problem is we've taken fructose, we've turned it into high fructose corn syrup, and we have pumped it in to food-like substances, ultra-processed foods. And oh fructose God. is like 100 times more addictive than glucose. Okay, so it, it, it has a dopaminergic effect. So it's, it's the dopamine pathway is being damaged by the fructose. Jeez. So basically, the dopamine hit when you get exercise, when you exercise, you get a dopamine hit and endorphin. Mm. The sugar's giving people a dopamine hit as well. But what we're yeah. finding is that people who are eating more and drinking more sugar are getting that insulin spike. Mm -hmm. Then when you've got the insulin spike, your body is just craving more and more sugar. And more and more carbohydrates. Exactly. You're not getting full up. Exactly. And that's where I guess the knock-on effect of people becoming obese and fatter and fatter and fatter because they're not feeling full. Exactly. Okay. So there was a study that came out in 2019 that showed that ultra-processed foods cause people to eat, overeat by 500 calories per day because they are nutrient poor and mm. calorie dense yeah. and they are addictive yeah. so that fructose for example yes it's dopamine but it actually slows down or stops the dopamine pathway so it's like that you want more it's like yeah. you know the um the fruit machine the craving the, gambling. the craving, the craving. It's, a, it's a deficit so you it's an addiction on, yeah it is it's a full-on addiction yeah. but the 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 it's interesting you talk about addiction I'll, I'll chat to lads and they go oh you've got alcohol addiction you've got drug addiction you've got sex addiction you've got food addiction no one ever talks about sugar mm -hmm. because yeah. sugar is hidden everywhere and as we know like sugar's in pasta sauces sugar's in red bull sugar's in everything you see the sugar in there i get a chicken the other day and i'm very high on my as you know i'm high on, my, on good food and good nutrition mm -hmm. i got chicken the other day one plain chicken one other chicken brown sugar coated in brown sugar coated in dextrose what mm -hmm. and your normal bod will not know they just think it's a chicken yeah but you're putting more sugar into your yeah. body without even realizing yeah so it's cheap and it sells and it's tasty and you can sell more of it and the marketing companies the big food companies are making obviously a lot of money out mm. of this you know it's it's cheap to to mass produce and it's the marketing as well so the worry for me is the young children you know the younger the age um the more easy it is to brainwash them yeah. i think that's where maybe my eyes were really alerted to this at my young age because um, like I say I, I wasn't brainwashed by marketing yeah. for the first five years of my life um, and I see a difference between my daughter and my son so my son's a bit younger he's 11 my daughter's 13 and I think something's gone on you know I think there's been a real ramping up even more so in the last few years yeah of the marketing towards young people. Because of social media. Because of social yep. media and it's more, you know, in your face yep. and it's being very, very cleverly marketed to a certain age bracket. Yep. You know, Prime, for example, we can yep. obviously talk about some of these things that have really become, you know, super um, addictive and, uh, you know, priceless almost to people. But it was interesting what you're saying there, like we were marketed to in the 80s, right? Yeah. Mars bar. Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. Yeah. And you got all your milk and they would pour sugar in. And we all thought, milk, sugar, it's good for you. Yeah. No one had a Scooby. No. I remember no one had a clue. I remember my old man in the 80s would go, yeah, there's two quid, Dodge. Go down to the corner shop there and we'd get 10 bars of chocolate. We'll eat yeah. 10 bars of chocolate, but five each. Yes. Because no one knew. No, but at least where we're at, at the moment, we've got the internet mm. to teach people. But I think the, I think the, a high percentage of people still don't have a clue what they are putting in their bodies and what yeah. it is doing to their bodies, what it is doing to their gut and what it is doing to their brain. Yes. Now, if you're putting sugar into your body without even realizing what it is, you're having a Coke can, mm. a can of Coke, it's got 40 grams of sugar. Mm. Your normal bod doesn't realize as a parent, if you're giving that to your kid, you're giving them 10 teaspoons. Too much. 10 Way teaspoons too much. in a drink. Yeah. That poor yeah. kid doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's abuse. It can be seen as abuse, really. No it one is. really, it can be seen as abuse. Yeah. You're given. And it's acceptable. And yeah. it shouldn't be acceptable. So the, so the sugar industry, they, they played this story. And so, you know, fat was the problem. And yeah. then we all got obese and, you know, diabetes. There's, there's a huge, huge increase in diabetes. There's 4.3 million people with diabetes. There's 
850,000 people in the UK walking around with diabetes that don't even know they've got it. Is that right? Yeah. So there's 4 million people who know they've got um, eight, type 2 diabetes. Yeah, type 2 diabetes. And there's just under a million that don't know they've got it. No. All of these things are silent. You don't know. You don't know if your blood sugar is dysregulated. You don't know if you've got cardiovascular disease until it's too late, late. unfortunately. Cancer. These are all silent chronic diseases that are just, you know, silently sweeping the country. And it's been done, like I say, a lot of the, the research and the marketing has been skewed. Yeah. And, the, and we, yes, so then we realized sugar's a big issue. And in the last maybe year or two, we've realized that actually it's ultra processed foods because by default, they're going to contain what you're talking about, these high loads of sugar. So it's the ultra processed foods. So just let's just break down. There's a few really good topics here. Ultra processed foods mm -hmm. in my eyes here is then when you've got a packet of ham and you look at the back and there's 10 ingredients on there with mm -hmm. words that I can't even pronounce exactly because no one's got a clue what these words are mm -hmm. these are these are all hidden stuff that no one's got a clue about yes and this is, stems from sugar being pumped into meat as well yes oh yes so so you've got the nova scale which is four scales of food so you've got not processed, slightly processed, mildly processed, and ultra processed. Okay. So the Nova Scale 4, that's what we use as nutritionists okay. to identify. And the problem is that ultra processed food is very high in sugar, very high in salt, very high in saturated fat, and very high in usually E numbers, additives, preservatives. It's not even food. It's been made in a lab. It's been made in a factory. It, it's, it's the biggest threat to our health is ultra processed Bloody food. hell. So if I went into a supermarket, how do I know if something's processed versus ultra processed? Mm. Are there any signs on the front? Because they brought signs in now. You know, you've got your green, your amber and your red. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's high in sugar, it'll be red, yeah. danger, be careful or whatever. So it's, it's, giving, it's helping people in some way. Mm. How do you know if something's ultra processed? It's really hard to tell, yeah. actually. The mark, the the branding, the packaging can be very deceiving. And like you say, the different colours and the way that they will say 100 grams per whatever. Of, you know, it, it's very confusing to to break it down and for people to actually know whether it's it's healthy or not. And the packaging, the 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 wording seems to be getting smaller. I don't yeah. know. It's it is underneath. And it's you hidden. have to really hard. Yeah. You know, you have to really dig in to see it. Um, and it's being presented in a way that is very, very confusing for people. Mm. Um, so there is an app that I use, which we can talk about in a bit. Yeah. And I've I've started using that recently. And I'd like, you know, more people to know yeah. about this app. What's the name of the app? It's called Yucca. How do you spell that? Um, Y-U-K-A. Okay. And there are others out there. There's one called Think Dirty. There's quite a few apps that can do this. But I find that Yucca is a really, really and good that's one. And that's a barcode. You barcode Scan it and it comes barcode. up and tells you, on a scale of 1 to 100, mm -hmm. this is brutal. Don't go near it. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. It, and yeah. this is okay and this is good for you yeah exactly exactly so that's one way that we can start to tell um because really like you know you go into the shops and apparently we are all consuming up to 50 percent of our food from ultra processed foods and if you go into a, a, a standard corner shop or a petrol station i think that what's on the shelves is more like 80 90, 90 plus when you're queuing up paying for your petrol and you've got temptation left temptation right biscuits crisps chocolates that 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 Everything is just sugar. It's everywhere. So it, how related is sugar to cancer? So it is very related. Um, it's not a type 1 carcinogen, the WHO has said. There are other... What do you mean by that one so type 1 carcinogen? cancer-causing. Okay. So if we're going to talk what's cancer-causing, the WHO has said that... Alcohol, Who's the WHO? World, the World Health, Health, Health okay. Organization. Yep has said that alcohol is a type 1 carcinogen. Processed meat is a type 1 carcinogen. So bacon, sausage, ham, that's a fact. Sugar does many other things to the body, which may ultimately increase cancer. So it increases inflammation, blood sugar balance is dysregulated. Um, it, it disrupts the gut microbiome. It impacts your mental health. Um, it's just a, a metabolic disaster, basically. And when you have a metabolic disaster, you're more likely to, unfortunately, for your body to not be able to see cancer, let's say. Yeah. So it's an indirect um, cause. But there's something called a metabolic syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of metabolic mm. syndrome. 
Uh, metabolic syndrome is a, is a list of things. So metabolic syndrome is when someone has high blood pressure, high BMA. High B, what's BMA? BMI is BMI, your, your body, mass, body index. mass index. And what, just to break down body mass index, what is that? Well, it's not a great marker, to be honest with it's you. Not, it's not, because it's confusing. It's confusing. Agreed. So it's your weight and your height. So if you're a bodybuilder, obviously it's going to be skewed. Agree. Or you yep. are obese, mm -hmm. but you're six foot six. You exactly. can kind of get away with it on yeah. this BMI thing. Yeah, okay. the BMI thing. But yeah. you could be obese and five foot seven and it look brutal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So okay. it's still the standard. We need to move on from yeah. that. But in terms of metabolic syndrome, they're still using BMI as a marker for weight. So high blood pressure, high BMI, high blood glucose, which we, we can come on to, high triglycerides, which are a type of fat in the blood, high bad cholesterol and low Jesus good cholesterol. Christ. All from all from Well, this is this is a metabolic disaster that comes from eating too much sugar. So there's no win. The, the sugar's the enemy. Like uh, sugar should be taken out of your diet immediately because yeah. there is no positives whatsoever in sugar. And if you have three out of five of the things I just listed, you have metabolic syndrome. And you're in trouble. How many people do we think are walking around with metabolic syndrome? Must be lows. Very high percentage. And you don't know. It's funny, isn't it? You're an age, like you hit an age and you see some of your pals you haven't seen in a while. Hmm. And you, we, all, we all meet somewhere like, Jesus Christ, what's he been eating for the last six months? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can see that they're, you can see, it. you can see that he's having a bottle of white wine on a Tuesday night. You can see that he's munching on crisps and munching on stuff because you can't get that bloated hmm. eating clean, good food, right? Yeah, no, definitely it's not. It's a fuel on bloat. So when you see someone bloated and, mm. and their belly gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you mentioned a minute ago, like 500 calories per day, they're eating uh, probably more than they should do. Mm -hmm. Over a week, that's three and a half thousand calories. That's one pound. Yeah. One pound of body fat. Have you ever seen a pound of body fat, the yellow, blubbly, yeah. horrible thing it's versus a pound of muscle? Exactly. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It's literally disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So how do men how do they realize that what's going on in their body they could be in serious trouble because on the outside they're fun time frankie mm. they go down the pub they meet their mates they play a bit of a tiny bit of sport here and there they're a good laugh da -da. but yeah. deep down they're realizing that their belly's growing that their their gut is telling them something mm -hmm. it's telling their mind that you're not in a good place what's the right thing for these guys to do do you think yeah, I mean, like you say, you know, it's all fun times, you know, go out, have some drinks and, yeah. you know, the beer belly starts to creep on and maybe you, your mates might make a bit of a joke yeah. out of it. Oh, mate, you know, got a bit of a beer belly now. Yeah. It's it's not taken seriously enough. Yeah. Okay. So when you've got that beer belly, when you've got that bloating, when you've got that subcutaneous fat yes. that's sitting around your belly, you have most likely got visceral fat. Visceral fat is clinging to your organs and it's suffocating oh. them. So the fat is clinging to your organs yeah. and then squeezing them, yeah. squeezing which the will then them. cause heart disease. All sorts, liver problems. Yeah. So you're going to feel crap, aren't you? Yeah. You're going to feel sluggish, brain fog, maybe depressed, lack of energy. You might anxiety. Anxiety. The fear. Focus. Yeah. Brain, yeah. Everything. You, you can't, you know, walk around like that forever and actually not feel unwell inside so you physically you're going to look at it and then emotionally and mentally you're going to feel it and it's what point someone says okay i think i need to maybe yeah. get checked and yeah. that this is quite often where people will come to me or they might go to the private doctors yeah. that i work with or to the nhs first yeah. and that's obviously the first port of call if you're not feeling right things don't feel right Go and get checked. Go and yeah. get your blood work done. And unfortunately, you'd be surprised the number of guys that I see in their 30s who are pre-diabetic. Wow. Who have high liver enzymes, who have high cholesterol. So just explain cholesterol. Let's keep this simple. Cholesterol is blocking up of your arteries. Is that the blood flow, flow going through your arteries? Yeah. So I do a lot with the cardiovascular system yeah. because it's, you know, it's the number one biggest killer worldwide is cardiovascular disease. That's actually what my father died of. He yeah. died of sudden heart failure. Um, so it's obviously close to my, to my yeah. heart um, and I can see it and I'm very empathetic and I can see that this is a big, big, big issue because I see it time and time again in my clinic. So um, weirdly enough, sugar 
increases fat in the bloodstream and cholesterol. So again, sugar's at the root of oh, all this again, mate. right? So sugar's in the root of that sugar's, and sugar's the passing the, the, the root of cancer as well. But it's sugar. Yeah. Sugar is the thing that drives the changes in these fats in your blood. So triglycerides come from sugar. Okay, so it turns into fat, stores in your body, and then it turns into what we call the bad cholesterol. So again, the problem is also to do with inflammation. Inflammation is a huge, huge problem. Again, sugar is inflammatory. It inflames your vascular lining. Yeah. And then along comes the fat, the cholesterol, and it thinks it's doing the right thing yeah. by patching up the tears on the lining. Yeah. Um, but then over time, that's going to build up. That's what you don't want. You don't want this cholesterol building up in your arteries because then ultimately, unfortunately, you may have a blockage. And then you have a heart attack. Yes. Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's, how mad? That's that's this is this is anyone listening? Any lads out there listening? This is real. Yeah, it is. This um, is real. And how many lads are there that we all know who are big lumps, mm -hmm. and we all take the Mickey out of them? Da, 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 and they must go away going. I don't look good in a pair of boxer shorts. Or I look in the mirror, I don't look good. But the addiction of the sugar, which mm -hmm. is eight times more addictive than the cocaine, if they use cocaine or someone use cocaine, yeah. how do they get out of that cycle? That's an interesting one. So physically and mentally, you need to break the cycle. But it's how, how we work initially. So we've talked about the physical side, obviously, you know, starting by getting checked and et cetera, et cetera. We'll come on to that. But mentally, let's talk about how you can break that psychological, neurological pathway. Because basically, ultimately, it's your, your brain of logic and reason has been hijacked by your lower brain, your primitive brain, mm. the, what we call the monkey mind. Yeah. It's been hijacked. And it's been hijacked by the marketing companies, by the fast food companies. And so that when you walk into your favorite off license, your fast food place, whatever, wherever it is you go, the neurological pathways keep solidifying so that you just keep walking down to that same place to get that same food. To get that same dopamine hit. to do it. So it's about trying to break that habit. Yeah. And you just have to... Become aware, become self-aware, you know, it's it's not unmanly to take a look inside, you know, yourself and sort of reevaluate and maybe make some changes. It's, yeah. it's okay to sort of say, it's it's not okay, I'm, I'm not feeling okay, I know I need to make some changes and I'm going to start one day at a time. Mm. It doesn't have to be drastic, it can just be, you know, changing one thing. Yeah. One small thing. Don't booze Monday to Friday at home. For example. Take, or or in your house, make sure there's no biscuits and crisps in there. You clear them out. Yeah. That's your first step. That's the first step. Yeah. So the petrol station that's closest to my house has changed to um, a different brand now. It's Asda. And I've noticed that as you walk to the checkout, they now have um, packets of nuts and seeds and yeah. help, like real food, actual yeah. food. So, yeah, the rest of the store is full of crap. Yeah. Mm. But at least they're trying to do something mm. so what about when you go into the store just try to change up what you would normally have maybe you would normally when you go and get your petrol pick up a, a snickers bar mm. pick up some some a bag of nuts and seeds mm. i know it doesn't sound very manly no, they're lovely though but it's lovely, they're lovely. protein good fat how fiber. nice like we both eat clean right? yeah we're 90 10 i'd say have a little yeah. once a week da, da, da. but how nice is it eating clean foods and having your taste buds there there's no sugar in your body mm. your taste buds go to a whole new level yeah you know like you can eat clean meat from the butchers you can eat beautiful uh apples and tangerines and mm. grapes and all your berries and your blue i'm addicted to blueberries blueberries and <laughs> there's so much beautiful food out there but i think we're so drilled in a way that the marketing companies just drill it into you must have that it's, there's temptation everywhere yes you know it's temptation at every angle i also think like like even like young kids, hmm. like my little boy, he, he's 10, it goes, it goes in the supermarket, he looks at the back of the packets of stuff and realizes what sugar levels it is and da da da, which hmm. trying to teach him this because I never got taught this, you never got taught, we never got taught this as no. kids. And if we can pass that down, that's a nice gift to give to make them aware. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just in, in shock really. Yeah. Like when you look at your circle of friends around the country and wherever, and you realize that as we're getting older, you can see the ones that haven't changed their diet or movement or getting more exercise or eating cleaner. Mm. There's going to be a point where, like you mentioned, heart disease. There's going to be a point where they might have a jolt. Yeah, that wake up call. Yeah. 
Do they have to, instead of waiting for that to happen, Mm. are you suggesting that they go and get themselves checked out and get a blood test? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 100%. So what I do is preventative healthcare. So Mm. I'm all about root causes and prevention. And, you know, that for me is incredible, you know, to be in that space. So I love working with younger children and young adults. Like imagine, you know, moving that dial for a young adult, you know, 18 to 21, Mm. If you could just move that dial slightly, the trajectory of their health and their life, but also for for young guys in their 30s, 100%, you know, I work a lot with people getting blood tests done. So other tests that I run as well, but generally, like I say, working with the private doctors, I do, um, people will have the test done and then they'll come to see me and I will help them to interpret that test. Okay. Give me an example. Say if a bloke who's Mm. in their 20s, partied all through his 20s. Yeah. Clubs, bars, restaurants, not caring. Mm-hmm. 30s, he's still carrying on of yeah. boozing. And but, you're wondering. And he's one, that, th- yeah. that sort of that 37 year old or 43 year old, 44, and they get into the 40s and they're like, I've been smashing, I've been smashing the granite out of this for the last 20 odd years on mm. substance, alcohol, crap food, not good sleep. They would come to you and get a test. How long would it be until they get the results back? And can you tell straight away whether in that bloodstream, whether they are diabetic, yeah. type 2? Yeah. So the bloods get done um, at the Dorset Private GP Clinic, where yeah. I'm the nutritionist yeah. there. Uh, it takes two, three days. They get sent to myself. The person will meet with me, and I will go through the results with them. So obviously I'll look, and I'll be able to see straight away. We're looking red blood cells, white blood cells. Liver enzymes is a is a big problem. Blood glucose and uh, cholesterol, um, so the lipid panel that we call it. And then we're looking at other things, minerals, kidney function, proteins in the blood, hormones. It's 58 biomarkers. Is that right? And it costs you a few hundred quid. Who cares? You want to know. know. And then you know. But you'd be surprised the number of people that are heading towards or are pre-diabetic. This is anything that's um, 42 or over is pre-diabetic. And a lot of people are heading in that direction. 42 of those 58 things that tick the box. No, the brackets for um, blood glucose, so your HbA1c is the amount of glucose in your blood yeah. from the previous 120 days of your red blood right, okay, cells okay and the marker for anything that's pre-diabetic yeah. is 42 yeah, or okay, over okay so we're looking at that mainly we're also looking at liver enzymes so like you're talking about alcohol consumption when you consume alcohol and consume sugar it overburdens your liver so your liver cannot cope with that amount of glucose and alcohol in your liver so what happens is then the enzymes spill out into your blood so then you get raised liver enzymes and you'd be surprised again, the number of people that have raised liver enzymes. I mean, it's fairly, if you catch it quick enough, yeah. you know, cut the alcohol, cut the sugar, start eating clean. Your liver does a fantastic job of regenerating yeah. itself. But if you've been smashing it for 20 odd years or 10 years mm. or even 25 years, mm. your liver's going to be a mess, right? Yes. Although the liver does, <laughs> it does work wonders. It regenerates yeah. every six weeks. But if you're not giving it breathing space, no, mm. no, not good, not good, not good for your your metabolism. So the ma- one of the main issues that we're going to talk about with sugar is insulin. Yeah. So sugar's not the, is the is the problem, but then further in that pathway, people talk about going low carb, you know, cutting out sugar. What you really want to do is stop spiking your insulin yep. so much because the insulin is the thing that pulls the sugar out of your blood into your cells. And it, what it does is it actually pulls the insulin into fat storage. Yep. Yep. That's where it's going. Yep. It's going to fat. And that could be done time and time and time again if you're eating the wrong kinds of food. And in the end, A, you become insulin resistant, yep. which is where you get pre-diabetes. And B, this fat that's being stored can create estrogen. Mm. And estrogen can decrease your testosterone. And testosterone, when it's low, can further increase the fat and the estrogen and the inflammation. So it's Jesus, this whole kind wow. of milieu wow. that you're that, of a problem. And then what happens? What happens to a male? Uh, estrogen starts happening. What happens? To, what happens? To their sex life. Well, not great. Not great. <laughs> no, they can't get it. They can't. No, they can't. Okay. So yeah, erectile yeah. dysfunction is a big problem. Yeah. That's to do with the endothelial lining. That's to do with inflammation and blood sugar again. Bloody hell. That's how it's linked. That's the Sugar link. That's needs the link. chopping out of the whole world, right? <laughs> yes, it does. My God. I can link everything back My to God. the issue with sugar. I wanted to step back a couple of bits there, Leila. This is really interesting, by mm. the way. I'm loving this. 
I want to go back a little bit further and then go back to the bit where we spoke about sugar, what happens when sugar, when there's too much insulin spike, your insulin is constantly spiked because of the sugar. Yes. What does that do to your mental health, your mental state, your mind health? Yes. So if you do not have a balanced diet, so if you're eating things that are just purely high in sugar and there's nothing to package up the sugar, so there's no fiber, there's no roughage, there's no real food. And as in terms of fiber, as in? Fiber being the roughage of the food, yeah. the stalks, the plants, the seeds. So like an apple. A re- yeah, the apple's ap- got the skin, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, fiber. Yeah. That's crucially important that we can come on to mm. talking about how important that is mm. for gut health. But if you don't have fat and you're eating these food-like substances, yeah, the ultra-processed foods that with full of fructose that's just slamming into your bloodstream, the insulin has to quickly shuttle. And so you get this huge spike in insulin and it will pull it in and go to the, the fat storage. Mm. And you've got that happening time and time and time again. So this is going to cause, in the short term, it's going to make you have brain fog and low energy. So that's yeah. why people have that slump in the afternoon. Yeah. So it might make you feel good for f- the first five minutes. Yeah. But I don't know about you, but if I was handed a piece of cake or something sugary, mm. I feel really rubbish yeah. about 10 minutes afterwards. I always mm. need to have a little lie down. But that's the problem. People are getting these afternoon slumps and then they're reaching for more. More. Because it. it's the craving. If you have, yeah. what I've noticed, if you have more sugar, you're craving more sugar yeah. and you can't get full. Yeah. You go for a, a bag of biscuits, you go for a, you could be in the cupboard, you'll be in the fridge looking for more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Tell me what diabetes is. Like everyone uses this word diabetes. Let's keep this really simple. How can we simplify what diabetes, if you have got a man come in in his 40s, yeah. he's massively overweight, he's got a waistline of 37 inches up to 40. Did they, I think it's over 40 inches, they say, of your waistline that that's obese. Yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah. These come to you here and what's your warning to someone that if you are confirmed that you've got type 2 diabetes, Diabetes, what does that actually mean? Yeah. So again, this this is something that can happen over years. You know, it's not like that. The short term sugar hits that we just spoke about then cause this chronic issue with blood sugar, which can cause type 2 diabetes. So if you can imagine day after day, Week after week, month after month, year after year, the insulin is doing this thing into the cells. And in the end, the cells just get fed up and they're like, I've had enough of this. And they just shut off and you become insulin resistant is what it's called. So then you get this increase in blood sugar because the insulin is no longer working. And that's what causes the diabetes. You don't want sugar in your blood. It's very, very toxic. But what is diabetes? If someone said, well, I'm now diabetic, what do they have to do? What's the what's mm. the headache? Why why doesn't why do people not want to have diabetes? Because you can't function properly with your insulin levels. You okay. have to then have medication to help. Oh. You have to actually inject insulin in to yourself to do the job because you're insulin resistant. Oh, so man. then you have to be on medication to help with to get the blood sugar out into your cells to function properly. Oh, so, so it becomes a proper ball ache, basically, of really? going, right, hold on a minute, we've got to stop, I need to inject myself because I... Yeah. Okay. And also, it's the leading cause of cardiovascular disease. You can even lose your limbs from having diabetes. There are, ma- there are loads of complications with diabetes, not not just the blood sugar. It's It's the leading cause of death. So you want to avoid that where possible. So anyone listening out there, if they are overweight mm. and their diet, because a lot of people, I also notice as well, Layla, I've got friends who go and see, you know, a PT and the PT is saying, oh, send me your diet for the week because they're yeah. massively overweight. No one ever tells the truth. Yeah. No one ever tells the truth of their diet for the week. They go, oh, yeah, I had um, avocados in the morning, I had chicken at night and I had a few carrots and uh, mm. yeah, I, I had a glass of wine on the Friday. And they'll just give the week what they what that person wants to hear. Yeah, knowing they're being recorded. Knowing they're being recorded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But actually, the truth is, if they were to say, "Oh, you want to cook my want to cook my kids' dinner?" They got half a pizza, I had a couple of slices of that, and they had some chicken nuggets. I had some of that. Went down the pub, had three pints of my pal and a bag of crisps, and uh, my pal had some nuts on the side, so I was yeah. munching the ready salted nuts. Yeah, that. It's all the these truth. little extras. Yeah. So it's okay to have dessert once in a while. Yeah. Just don't have it for breakfast, lunch, and yeah. dinner. Yeah. And a lot of people are having dessert for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. You know, cereal 
has cereal got is as terrible. much sugar as a as a piece of cake yeah. or, or a couple of you know massive cookies or, or these drinks that we'll come on to. So you could quite easily be having what we would call a, a treat, a dessert for your breakfast, for lunch, and dinner. And then you know, like we're talking about pre-diabetes or diabetes, just going back to what we were saying, um, it's it's not too late. You know, if if you do find that your blood sugar is is becoming dangerously high, um, but they wouldn't you, know. No, the normal you, bod wouldn't know. know. You wouldn't go. I won't go. Oh, my blood sugar's dangerously high at the moment. I'm just living life, mm. but I know that I'm getting a belly, and the belly there's, there's something going on inside me, mm. and you're getting a belly on you. That that's the trigger point. If you're getting a belly, to realise yeah. that something has you, you've got to go and see someone and get a blood test. Or, you have okay. All men should do it, and like I say, being a, a men's health expert, mm. you know, talking about testosterone and men's hormones. You know, there's a lot of talk, obviously, and rightly so, about women's hormones. You know, and the menopause, for example, and that that's really front of mind, and that's right. But we're not talking about men and men's hormones. And you know, you guys have hormones. We've all got the same hormones. Yeah. We've all got estrogen, progesterone, you know, testosterone. We just use them differently, obviously, in mm. different ways. So men have what we call more of a 24-hour cycle um, with your hormones. They just regenerate. But uh, from the age of 30 to 35, men's testosterone slowly starts to decline. That's a natural course of aging. And with this slow decline in testosterone comes slight um, weight gain, muscle loss, possibly depression, hair loss, trouble with sleeping. And this men aren't putting two and two together and thinking, actually, yeah. you know, my hormones are are declining and my diet's got a lot to, to play into this, as we've spoken about the fact that sugar decreases, you know, increases fat, which decreases testosterone, yeah. increases estrogen. And how is my lifestyle playing yeah. a part in this accelerated decline in the issues with my hormones? And from a lifestyle perspective, there's a lot that people can do mm. to um, reverse a lot of what we've just spoken about. And also what you mentioned there, when you are overweight and you're eating crap food, you look so much older. Yeah, it's aging. Sugar's aging. It's aging. It's aging. There's no win. There's no yeah. positives no. out of this whatsoever, is there? <laughs> no. Apart from taking sugar out of your diet and reducing your alcohol intake. Yeah. So alcohol, class one carcinogen. Okay. So it's ethan ethanol is a is a poison. Yeah. So we've got ethanol and we've got fructose that we spoke about yeah. earlier. These are the two biggest issues. And what they do, without getting too scientific, mm. we talked about metabolism being in the cell. So ethanol and fructose will down-regulate your energy production. So then you want more or yeah. you need more energy. So it's not, again, directly increasing your calorie intake and your consumption of fatty, sugary, you know, harmful, calorific foods. Mm. But it is. It's playing a role in that. Um, you know, it's making you want to seek more calorific foods because it's impacting your metabolism. Yeah. Um, and, you know, e ethanol is a poison, so it will come into your body. Is ethanol in alcohol, did you say? It's alcohol. That's what alcohol so it is. is. It is alcohol. Ethanol okay. is alcohol. Okay. Okay. So, it, it's a poison. So it will come into your body and yep. your liver will say, okay, this guy is eating sugar, a uh, bit of fat, a bit of protein, eth ethanol. It's a poison. I need to get rid of that yeah. before I get rid of anything else okay. because I'm being poisoned. So the body, the liver will have to get rid of that first so that you're not poisoning yourself yeah. to death. Therefore, you're not dealing with all the other food Jeez. calories. So if you're, bang if you're banging in lots of alcohol each week and terrible food, yeah. you need to take one of them out of the system for a month mm. and then go, I took alcohol out of my system for a month, yeah. let my body see what's happening in my body, and then you can start playing around with other stuff. Because yeah. no one's going to go in from day one who's – majority of people are clueless in terms of what they're putting in their body. Mm -hmm. You don't know like the, no. the amount of sugar and da-da-da-da. Is your suggestion for a middle-aged 35 to 45-year-old – who has a poor diet is your suggestion what would your suggestion be yeah so it, it depends on the person and so like i say i work with lo lots of different types of people and i like to assess what what that person is like when i'm when i'm personally working with someone because you'll get different personality types some people you can say something to them and they they're not ready to hear it or they, they won't hear it, or they won't do it. Some people have different personality types where you tell them to do something, that's it, they'll do it black and white, yeah. you know, you, you know the type of person. Yeah. Um, but generally, I'm a nutritional therapist. Mm. You know, it's my it's the therapy is in my title. 
you know, that's how I like to work with people. So I'm not looking at calories in, calories out, but I am looking at, you know, educating that person, supporting that person and helping them to make small, measurable changes. So what can we do? What small steps can we make? Maybe take two or th- make two or three changes in the diet? small things so what what can we do in terms of like we spoke about the nuts and the seeds and the berries that you like that you talked about can you add them can you replace them with something else that you're mindlessly maybe snacking on in the evening or when you go to the shops and you're grabbing that thing can we change it for this even with alcohol i know it's a it's a tricky topic to say remove it completely but for a starter can we say okay if you're drinking jd and full fat coke Mm. can we change it to something Mm. else initially and try to slowly but surely you know move things in the right direction because you know life is life and it's difficult to exclude all of these things 100 percent talking about ultra processed foods you know they we are going to come into contact them there's no doubt that we are going to consume them but the research says that if we're consuming no more than maybe seven to ten percent of these foods per day, then they may not have these health implications that we've spoken about. Give me an example of you going into a supermarket and identifying ultra processed foods. So ultra processed foods are um, high in calories. They are low in nutrients. They've been made in a factory. They've got chemicals and additives. They've had the goodness stripped out of them. They're very low in fiber. They don't contain any of the healthful brain giving gut loving nutrients. They're in a package. So they're probably in plastic. They have a long shelf life and that in itself can cause chemicals to seep from the food, which can cause cancer. Jesus, It's not food. So anything in a packet, basically, in your supermarket, pretty much. That packaging where you've got, like you say, with children, like a picture of like a happy bunny with a smiley face yeah. that sums up with like a splash of milk. That's fake. Yeah. There's nothing about that food that's got anything to do with a happy bunny and a splash of milk. Yeah. But we're being brainwashed and we're just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We go into McDonald's, they've got all yeah. the colouring things and you've got a happy meal for the kids of all the- Happy meal. Happy meal. The word uh, unhappy itself. meal. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And actually, you break that down. It's full of crap. Mm. It's full of rubbish and crap in there. Yeah. I went. I took my boy to a party the other day, and at the end of the party, the the mum had the twenty kids there and giving out all the bags and mm. all the, the, the. And I was like, no, nah, he's all right. Yeah. And it was just in the bag was just lollies and sweets and sweets and sugar and sugar and sugar. And I was kind of, I was kind of, I was cool with doing that. Yeah. And my boy was cool with it as well. He's like, no, I don't want it, Dad. But I kind of got a little bit of a nose turn to be like, why are you not having my bag of Right. Sugar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like you're the odd one out by saying, no, I don't want it. I'm, I'm, yeah. He's had enough today. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, uh, you mentioned that to me, George. I yeah. think it's great, you know, that your children have woken up to it at yeah. such a young age as well. And I think that's where I've woken up to it, obviously, because I, when we moved to this country, I remember sitting in McDonald's and eating a burger and just looking at the burger thinking, I was five years old, yeah. thinking, this isn't for me. Um, but it's, an, it's a very emotive subject and mm. it really is difficult. It really does get, people very divided very divided it's like you've got dealers everywhere your mum and dad is a dealer sugar. your granddad's a yeah, dealer your aunt is the sugar dealers <laughs> your aunt is giving you sugar as a kid your, your, your cousins your, your uncles and aunties are giving you that it's like there's dealers everywhere mm. and everywhere we walk there is sugar everywhere everywhere imagine if that was yeah <laughs> illegal. illegal yeah it should be illegal it should be yeah yeah but it's not because it's not, because alcohol isn't as well. You know, if, if we called it ethanol and you could see on the packaging what was really in it, you'd think twice about it, yeah. wouldn't you? If someone passed you like four pints of, um, you know, a poison like, but, and, and said, there you go, drink the four pints of poison, you wouldn't do it, would you? On that note, I've just brought this today, Leo. I want to mm. show you. I bought this pot of sugar. Mm-hmm. And because I was blown away like when you look what's actually in, for example, a Coke can. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do something here. Right. I've got a tea I've got a teaspoon. If you're listening or if you're watching, there's a teaspoon here and there's four grams of sugar in a teaspoon. Yep. Now in a Coke can, there's forty grams of sugar. So if as an as a parent, if you're giving your kid a Fanta or a Coke or a seven up, mm-hmm. this is exactly what you're giving them. Mm-hmm. One Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Wow. <laughs> That's ten teaspoons <laughs> of sugar mixed with a black drink that the kid doesn't know. No. So if, so if you pass that to someone's child and said, there you go, have that, you wouldn't. The parent would, if you mixed that with no. water and made it a bit dark, as a parent, yeah. you'd go, you're not giving that to my kid. Exactly. But because the marketing's so good and it's been drilled in everyone's head that Coca Cola is meant to be this amazing thing, that's disgusting. It is. It is. It's disgusting. actually disgusting. Imagine yep. that. Yeah. So you shouldn't be consuming any more than 30 grams of free sugar as an adult per day or 19 grams for children. So a Snickers bar, for example, has 27 grams of free sugar in it. It has so 27 if- grams of sugar? Yes. So if, okay. you, if you pop to the shops and get, you know, get pick up, get some petrol uh, and go, oh, just I'm feeling a bit, I'm having that afternoon slump because I've had my cereal for breakfast. I'll go and uh, have grab a Snickers. A, yeah, you, that that's your daily sugar intake gone. So that's okay. So each teaspoon is four grams. Yeah. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, <laughs> twenty-four. And a little bit less because it's, it's 27. Yeah, that's it. And that's in the Snickers? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I know. This is bonkers. It is bonkers. This is madness. And it's so easy to do that. Like, you see how it's so easy to do that time and time again. What, to grab something on the move? Just grab, something on the... grab it, yeah. You know, so you, you could be way, way overdoing your sugar con- consumption easily on a daily basis. Um, because it's everywhere as well. Because it's in front of us. We can't get away from it. Do you know what scares me most is like, if you mm. want to go and buy ham, you go and buy ham. Yeah. If you haven't got a clue, you just think it's ham. Yeah. But you look at the back, there's like 10 ingredients, 11 ingredients in ham. Yeah. I just thought ham was ham. Ham off the bone is ham, isn't it? Yeah. But it's been pumped with all sorts. Yeah. So it lasts longer. And what you're saying is that going into your body mm. is causing the increase in cancer. Yes, 100%. Bloody Processed hell. meats are type 1 carcinogen. Okay. So it's high in sugar. It's high in nitrates. It's, sorry, so it's high in nitrates, and it's the way it's been processed. So it's been it's been sort of hosed off the bone and remodeled together. So it's been put back together um, with other things, emulsifiers, additives. It's so far from yeah. what it was. And I know I, I do believe that you shop in a good butcher. So I yep. talked talk to my butcher yep. yesterday, Webster Butcher. Yep. I think you know we're lucky. Yep. I must say. And I must point out that we're very lucky. Mm. I think where we live, I have access to a butcher down the road. There's a bakery up the road. Mm. Waitrose is 10 minutes away. Most people, unfortunately, live in what is called a food desert. Mm. Okay, so a food desert is where they do not have access to fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, meat off you, the bone. You can... Uh, I, 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 I think you can find it if you want it. You can. It's harder. But do you think that... A high percentage of the population don't understand nutrition. Like this is a conversation. We're mm. trying to keep this as simple as possible. I know you've gone into detail, which is great. Mm. But if we were just really go on down a level and try to simplify it, that everyone in the country could understand it on a real simple level. Why is there no education on this? Well, it doesn't. It's no, it's of no one's interest to educate. And actually, if you look at what's in in the uh, the schools, it's it's just as bad. Yeah. Because uh, the big food companies in America and possibly in the UK have gone into schools and said, "Well, it's okay. We'll take on that role of feeding the nation's children." And actually, what children are eating in full foods in, in schools is fast food. It's just fast food as well. And we're, it's easy, it's cheap. It's all cost-driven. It's cheap. It comes down to cheap. It all comes down agree. to price. So if you think you can have a bowl of cereal in the morning, you're giving mm. your kid a, a bowl of Frosties or a bowl of something. If you look at the back and see how high the sugar levels are, mm. but it's cheap, it's quick, it's cheap, yeah. it's easy, and the kids go, on, I'm loving this, but they're getting addicted to it without even realising yeah. because they've got no guidance from the parents because the parents don't know. Yeah. This is, is like a, this is like a, a, a full circle. Mm. And we're all busy. Everyone's busy. You know, it's down to busyness. Ease, ease of access and price, I yeah. think, price point. And those three things, you know, it's very easy to kind of tap in and make sure that, you know, it's easy and it's cheap and it's... Mm. Do you, you believe know. in, do you believe like, it's interesting when you see people and you go, God, that's the dad and that's the son or that's the mum, that's the daughter and you can see the same shapes. 
Yeah. Do you believe in like there's people say, oh, you, yeah, they're just big boned? Or do you believe that it's, it's what you're putting in your body to make how your body looks right now? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a, a study that was done with twins. I don't know if you've seen mm. that one. So the guy. What, Danny DeVito and Arnie. <laughs> I still love that film. <laughs> no, no, not that one. Um, yeah, there was a the study that was done with twins out of King's College London, yep. right? So the guy um, that wrote Ultra Processed People, I don't mm. know if you've come across that book, Chris Van Dulican, he's a, he's a doctor. Um, so he's a twin. So the studies were done on him and other twins and it, it, they fed them different foods. So you think these, these people are genetically the same. If you feed one ultra processed food and you feed the other, you know, plant based, clean, whole foods, clean yeah, Mediterranean yeah, yeah, diet, yeah. you can start to track quite quickly yeah. what's happening to their bodies on, on a metabolic level, mm. their fat, their protein, their energy, their cholesterol, their blood sugar. So yeah, going back to what you're saying, it's, 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 you know, that nature nurture thing is very true. Whatever you put in your mouth is going to replicate how your body looks. A hundred percent. And how your mind looks and feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the gut, the gut health is just huge. I don't know. If so on, a, on, on the gut. Mm. So for example, you eat or drink something, it goes mm. down through and your gut system, yeah. it goes around like this. How easy is it for someone's gut to get blocked hmm. so i see a lot of guys with we talk about the whole gut the digestive system and what i see a lot with guys is um an issue with heartburn or stomach acid yeah so we're talking about how the, mo the food moves down so obviously you, you ingest the food and it goes into the top part of your stomach your yeah. stomach is where you've got the stomach acid yeah. and that first starts to break down the food and then it goes into the small intestine and that's where you start to absorb the food. And then your large intestine is where your gut bacteria is. And this is where all the magic happens yeah. with the fiber and the gut health side yeah. of things. Now, top down, you need stomach acid. You need the stomach acid to break down your food properly. But what I see, especially with a lot of guys, is heartburn. But heartburn is actually low stomach acid, yeah. weirdly enough, because stress and poor diet can decrease your stomach acid and you need this to break down your food. Mm. And if it just sits there, it's going to regurgitate mm. a bit. So you're going to get this heartburn feeling. And this really is what starts this cascade of problems because then you're not breaking down your food properly. So you're yeah. not getting your nutrients in. So that middle part, that small intestine, you're not absorbing all the nutrients mm. you need for full health to function and be productive. Um, and then if you're eating crap food, it's going down to the, the large intestine and you need to feed your gut bacteria with fiber. Yeah. So fiber, real food, the real Mediterranean diet, all those nutrients and that fiber is so crucial for the trillions of gut bacteria that are waiting there. We're, we're just the host yeah. to these trillions of species. Yeah. And what they do is they produce, um, they're called short chain fatty acids that help to protect our colon from cancer, for example. They produce certain vitamins and nutrients for us. And it even transports to our brain. Mm. So there's messages that go up to our brain that can make us feel either depressed yeah. or good. But so, it's interesting, right? If you eat clean and eat well, mm. it makes you happy. It does. It's all, and it makes yeah. you feel good. It makes your yeah. skin feel good. It makes you alive. It so makes the, you have wicked conversations. It yeah. makes you want to go and play more sport. It makes you want to feel good about yourself make better decisions better decisions better life be more decisions present for your children yeah. get more out of life yeah be more successful it all comes down to what you're eating yeah so if you eat crap food basically it feeds the bad bugs in the gut bacteria and they set off a chain of what's called in inflammation yeah. basically and this inflammation travels up to the brain so there's something called sickness behavior so just trying to explain it yeah. sort of quite simply Sickness behavior is an ancient mechanism. So when you, in the past, and we lived in caves, if there was a virus or a bacteria that came into the herd, um, sickness behavior is where the immune system would activate inflammation up to the brain to make you feel depressed yeah. and antisocial so that you would retreat to the cave and therefore not infect the herd. Yeah. So that's what's happening when your body is onslaughted with things like toxins and bacteria. So that's the same ancient mechanism that's happening when we're ingesting poison. So you're poisoning your body with wine yeah. and spirits mm -hmm. and booze, mm -hmm. poisoning your body with high fatty foods and high sugar. On top of that, that's not going to make you feel good whatsoever because you'll have a terrible hangover and you feel like your life's 
not in a good place. Yeah. You've got a job that you're under pressure with, which bringing stress on top of that as well. Mm -hmm. And then you feel depressed and you go and do it all again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's this cycle because the, the, I believe the feelings that you get from eating these foods and living this way can make you feel your brain feel more depressed, more anxious, more brain fog, um, you know, less in control. And you can't, and you feel like you can't cope. You feel like you can't cope. So you turn back to doing it again. So it's a cycle. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. But what yeah. you're saying is if you carry on that and you've been doing that for your, since the age of 18, through your 20s, getting into your 30s, your mid 30s, 40, mm -hmm. it's going to be a point where something's going to stop, whether you're going to have a yeah. mini heart attack yeah. or whether you're going to get diabetes yeah. or lots of other stuff. It will could present be triggered. in different ways. But yeah. if we go back to the young adult, vaping, nicotine, alcohol, high sugar, this causes this inflammation in the gut lining, which can cause the brain to change its function at that young age. Mm. So you can become more wired for depression mm. and this can lead to this cycle of the uh, addiction shall we say and the and the pressure you're putting on your heart with all this bad food and bad booze mm. and the stress of work or the stress of a your other half or whatever it may be mm. and if you're using cocaine on top of that yeah putting pressure on your heart again masses my god yeah so yeah, yeah. cocaine. I know we keep talking about cocaine with the sugar thing because of the mm. addiction, but as we know in the country, cocaine's rife, mm. as is sugar. Mm. So yeah. if you're an, if you're a, you're doing all of that, and then on the weekend you're banging cocaine up your hoot at the same time, the knock-on effect is going to be really not good. It's just a recipe for absolute disaster. Disaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Completely. Do you think there's a link between all of this? Male depression, mm. and then the horrible word that we know of men taking their own lives. Yeah, it's one in five. Is it one in five men? So suicide yeah. is the biggest killer of men under the age of fifty in this country. Yeah, in the forties. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean that's just staggering, isn't yeah. it? So heart disease overall biggest killer. One in five men dying before the age of sixty-five, and suicide being the number one killer under the age of, is it 40 or, or, or yeah. 45? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's obviously a huge issue going on here. Yeah. Men don't live as long as women. Yeah. You don't. Um, unfortunately, you live 4.5 years less than women. That's nearly half a decade. I'm having a challenge with that. Uh, I'm not having that. You, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be fine, Dodge. I know I know about you. You're in great shape. You've got a great diet. You're one of the lucky ones mm. who's who's enlightened to this, mm. you know, but we're all paying what we call a longe longevity tax. You know, we're taking years off our lives yeah. by eating and living this way. And unfortunately, men, I think, have it harder than women. And this, these are the stats, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the data has revealed all of this, that men don't live as long. Is that They're, because they carry more stress, you think? It's definitely yeah, stress. Okay. So on, this, on yeah. this note here as well, if you do not exercise as well, mm. You're not using your cardiovascular system to get mm. the blood flowing around. Mm -hmm. To get the toxins oh. out, to, to pump your heart, to feel better, to, to move your body. So and it's interesting, yeah. like if you're not if you're not clued up in the world, the majority don't know what's going on inside. Mm. But if we knew and we could see what was going on, it'd mm. probably make people go, Jesus yeah. Christ, I need to stop. Yeah, if you could see it. So with smoking, I mean, we've we've done a good job in the last 10 years to yeah. sort of change that you know but it, it wasn't putting the tax it wasn't raising the price of cigarettes that did it um and it, in a way it was those images i think that went on the back of packets and then i think the final thing was really people um, being enlightened to how much money the yeah. that was being made from the companies that were selling this stuff um and, and i think sugar is going to be the next big thing hopefully someone's got to happen will we need a wake-up call how we do it i'm not too sure but we obviously need to have this wake-up call because like you say you can't see blood glucose issue you no. can't see the cholesterol you, you can't see your liver but the knock-on effect for this layla is that mm. people are then getting ill and going to hospital which is causing pressure on our hospitals mm. if you go and visit someone at hospital there's a machine there which just got all sugar choices of crisps and yep. sweets and it's insane. And this is like insanity. The cycle, yeah. So a lot of my clients wear a blood glucose monitor. I don't which know if you, was that? What's so that? it's a little um, patch, a little plastic monitor that you can attach to your arm. Yeah. So you attach it to your arm. It just 
has a little kind of needle that goes under the subcutaneous layer of your skin yeah. and it measures your blood glucose for two weeks. You attach it to your phone, so it's an app, yeah. so you can actually see your blood glucose okay, you keep an eye on it. for two weeks. Now imagine if the NHS or somehow, you know, we were all able to wear a blood, 50 quid, yeah. wear a blood glucose monitor for two weeks, yeah. track your blood sugar, and then you'd be able to see a little bit what's happening inside your body. Mm. So you're having that cereal in the morning. Hang on a sec, check your phone. Oh my God, my blood glucose yeah, has gone. It's spiked. This isn't yeah, good. Okay. Maybe I should make that little change. Maybe instead of that cereal, or maybe I'll have it with some some nuts and some seeds and yeah. some fruit or something like that. See what that does. Mm. Hang on, now my blood sugar's not so bad. Yeah. And imagine making that small change over years how much of a positive impact yeah. that could have from just doing that one thing, which is wearing a blood glucose monitor yeah. for two weeks, which will ultimately, like you're saying, prevent the number of people ending up in hospital. Yeah. So. God, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Do we look at some of this food? Yeah, I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, I think what I was what I'm trying to say here is the hidden sugars are in pasta sauces. The hidden mm. sugars are in bread. The hidden sugars are in things that are everywhere mm -hmm. so anyone that listening out there i know you and i are a bit of geek on the old nutrition front of it but just have a look at the back of every packet you're looking just see just see the sugar content yeah and it's confusing by the world because it'll say 10 grams of sugar in 100 mil of that drink but that drink might be 500 mil so then you've got to times it by five and go there's actually 50 grams of sugar in there yeah you've got and to do one, some maths you've got to do some maths food. but it's yeah. worth you yeah. it's worth understanding these maths just to concentrate on the sugar don't worry about all the other complicated stuff concentrated on the sugar stuff that one teaspoon is four grams four grams exactly. and if you're banging in 40 grams of something that's 10 teaspoons mm. you just wouldn't choose to do that you wouldn't mm. choose to drink that and mix mm. it with water or mm. in a bar or chocolate yeah yeah bloody hell yeah because like we say it's a drug it's addictive it's a full-on drug causing all these metabolic disasters for chronic health and it's eight times more addictive than cocaine yeah. And people who use cocaine think it's really addictive, but cocaine's expensive, so people can wean themselves off cocaine mm -hmm. because of the expense. Where a gram of cocaine, I don't know how much a gram is these days, but 50, 60, 70, 80 quid, mm -hmm. versus a gram of sugar at 0.000, 000, 000, 000 penny, mm -hmm. people can actually go, well, I'm going to get that. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Get, yeah. yeah. But interestingly, if the price of eggs goes up, yeah. the consumption goes down. If the price of sugar goes up, it doesn't make any difference. Wow, is that right? That's how addictive it is. Yeah. People will pay yeah. for it. Mm. That's not going to make a difference. Either. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, Let's have so, a look at that. Grab that. Grab that. What have you brought in here? So pepperoni. I, I went. Yeah, pepperoni. So I, I've got this yucca wrap with me, right? Yeah. So I went into the shop and I just thought, I'm not going to overthink it. Yeah. I'm just going to pick up a few things um, that catch my eye. Yeah. I think, oh, hang on a sec. So this one, I thought, right, pick this up. This is pro milk. Yeah. So again, you know. 20 grams of protein, yep. no added sugar, fat free. You might be in a rush on your lunch break and think ticks that all the boxes. Ticks all the boxes. Yeah. Protein's going to fill me up. Yeah. Doesn't look like it's got any sugar in it. Only 188 calories. So this was the first one that I did. Yeah. So I'll scan it on the Yucca app, see what comes up. So this one, I was shocked. It's not out of 100. So it's just no, there's nothing good about this at all. So that basically comes up as a red flag on your app. By basically saying, yeah, this is brutal. Don't go anywhere near it. So reason being, it contains six additives. Three of them are hazardous. So it contains. Um, Who's allowing this? This is this is bugging me now. Who's allowing to put hazardous stuff into drinks and allow it to be on our shelves to I know. hurt our nation? But it's not the thing. It's allowed because it's not the one additive that's causing the problem. It's the cumulative effect, isn't it? So that one additive might not be hazardous the one time you have it, mm. but it's the hundreds or the thousands of times that you're exposed yeah. to all of this stuff. So E339, sodium phosphate, E950, acetylene K, ACE K, E955, sucralose type of sugar. Yeah. If you could see that on there, you wouldn't yeah. You wouldn't buy it, would you? Well, you wouldn't buy it if it was kept simple on the front by going mm. red flag, so red, red flag, flag. No red flag. But if, but as a company, and you're that company, mm -hmm. you would then have to change your ingredients because you don't want red flags on the front. Yeah, but then it won't have the shelf life. It won't have the price point. Yeah, you won't be able to sell it for to make your margin. Yeah, because these additives are what's keeping it on the shelves mm. and keeping it tasty as well. So the sugar is obviously what's making people go back mm. for more. And just be be wise. Oh, you know, use the app, check the packaging, think twice, make some small changes. 
doesn't have to be drastic. It doesn't yeah. have to be a, an overnight massive change. Just, but be aware. Just, just be aware. Be aware yeah. that if you carry on the way you are and you realise you haven't got a good diet and you're not exercising, da, 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 mm. be aware that one day something may happen to you. Yes. And that may be a heart attack. That may be... Yeah. <sighs> well, a heart attack, diabetes, obesity, cancer. These are the silent horsemen that are coming and they are here and wow. we need to address it. Wow. Layla, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dodge. Yeah, really I've really enjoyed it. it. It's a wicked chat. Yeah, Thank brilliant. you so much. Just before we finish, so where can people find you? So it's, I'm Layla Gordon Nutrition. Yep. So uh, my website's laylagordon.uk, but I'm massively on Instagram, Layla yeah. Gordon Nutrition. Brilliant. On Facebook as well. Pretty much everywhere, so easy to find. Lovely. Yeah. Layla, loved it. Thanks for having yeah, me on, Yeah, you're a superstar. Thank you. Nice one. Thank <laughs> you for your knowledge. Yes, thank you. Good stuff. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Can you do us a favour and subscribe to the channel? It's totally free and it massively helps our show. Cheers, guys. Bye.